Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hi guys. So this is me and Joseph Moon. Well, not anymore. Joseph not Monroe. Anymore. Yep. And we back. It's been a while. Uh, we took some time. We could never find time for each other. Yeah. It felt like it felt like we were talking. Though I said this to you, it felt like we were talking like last week. Time yeah, you're busy. I think we have. Yeah. Chosen. You're busy and I'm busy as well. We're not busy, but we're. This is the thing. When I say I'm busy, I'm not busy in the way that people are thinking. I'm doing more things for myself, learning about different things, mm -hmm. and. Well, that's being busy, right? Yeah, but you know, in like the three D world, people think like busy is like you know you're working all the time, and it's working on myself. And I think you're the same. <laughs> well, it's that balance because you're you you can you can kind of talk to anyone on my channel, but about it. But Brigitte, yeah, talk about like what you currently doing, and then we can just swap because I think mm -hmm. a lot of people want updates, and a lot of people love hearing from you, anyone. Like it, and from my, I'm talking about my channel because I yeah. got a message. I think last week someone said, "Hey, thank you for um, introducing me to Joseph because I really love his work." So I get so many people that come. Well, I have some people that have been there from like when we lived in London together. Um, but yeah, I I'm kind of I'm not doing anything that <laughs> interesting to be honest. Um, I've been taking a break. I have been working mostly on my connection to my higher self and trying to figure out more a little bit about that. And I've off camera had a big, I did not expect that to happen, but I had a big emotion. Huh? A release. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not a crier, but Jesus, Brigitte, I think I've cried to you more than anyone in my whole life. Well, I'm really happy about that. <laughs> and you were teaching, you were the one who was teaching me how to cry in London when I was over there. Don't forget about that. I, was I like, know. Shit, this is terrible. I'm, I'm going to get over this. I'm fine. And he's like, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I. I I so I'm still doing my YouTube and I'm starting to like interview interesting people. Um, I just want to like bring more people together because I am in no way really a healer. I still do like my readings and everything, but I'm I'm still healing in different parts of my life, and I don't really you know don't really know like w when we say we're healing people, it's. It's them healing themselves. You just yeah, give them yeah, that's and it. I'm kind of like because I'm very like visual and I see a lot of things and I'm thinking about the future and stuff. I'm like I need to be ready for these changes that are coming. So that's what I'm doing at the minute. I'm really working deep on myself and having some <laughs> surprises along the way. And you, I'll talk about that in maybe ten years. <laughs> If it comes to like a thing that I want next to share, life, maybe next time <laughs> we'll catch up. <laughs> um, but I'm so glad I I am able to tell Brigitte my deepest darkest secrets, and she's just like, okay, we'll work through this. Um, so yeah, I I think you should share for people what you're doing on my channel. You haven't offered it up yet, but you're. Yeah, I haven't really talked about it that much on YouTube at all. No, but you. Are, I said to you, you're in the perfect, it, it's just suited so much for you. And I remember like talk, we were talking about it. Like you kind of had it in your head a little bit. Well, like and then, I think half a year nearly. Yeah. And then I kind of confirmed things and I I spoke about Leo to you and then you, you met him and you spoke to him more about it because I... And I, I saw him, but I was like, I feel like I'm watching him for Brigitte. I don't know. And then I, I, I talked to you about it and it just, everything divinely kind of just matched up for you. And you're now so happy. I can tell like you're just like so interested in it because it's kind of like that little link that was missing for you. Not that. And I call it an extra tool that I kept looking for, but I didn't know what it was until. Yeah. Until you one day mentioned and you said, I don't know why, but I think you're going to find this guy interesting. And by the way, whoever does know who we're talking about, I've done a video on my channel um, with Leo on introspective hypnosis. And 
dude just sent me basically his Instagram. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I kept looking at his work and then I forgotten about him for like four or so months. And I came back to him and I was like, there was something there. There was something there. And we didn't even talk to you about this at all. Like just one day, I think I told you, hey, I spoke to Leo. And like, literally we had a chat and you were like, whoa, whoa, what's happening? You know? Mm -hmm. And I had this... uh, Everything happened so fast, though, after that. It was like, yeah, Yeah. it was like full on eight of wands kind of shit. I was like, holy shit, you're like doing a course. And (laughs) and now I'm talking to you and the course is over. And I'm like, whoa. (laughs) Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot. You know, a lot of people ask me, um, hey, did you did you ever have like a spiritual teacher? Did you ever have a tutor? And I think you are the same. We went on the spiritual journey on our own and I treasure it dearly because a lot of things that you find yourself Mm -hmm. are just going to be confirmed for for people who've been doing it for ages and you're going to see how powerful you really are and Mm -hmm. that your truth is actually the truth of millions of other people and this is a collective truth, you know? Mm -hmm. And I reached out to, I reached out to Leo and I said, hey, you know what, I just kind of, I know you do introspective hypnosis, but I don't want a hypnosis on myself. I just want to chat about it. And he was, he's super kind. He's super nice. Whoever wants to book a session with him, go ahead. Um, he was like, hey, let's just have a chat. You know, he didn't want to charge me for anything because it's still his time. Mm-hmm. And he took half an hour to explain to me how things work. And I said to him, I looked at uh, QHHT but it didn't vibe with me. There was something missing there for me. And he goes, yeah, I might, I don't know what he said, but it kind of made a lot of sense. Oh, I asked him about entities. I was like, mm-hmm. are they dealing with entities and um, spirit energy attachments over there? He's like, no, not in QHHT. And then I very suddenly realized why I had to talk to him because he learned from Antonio, mm-hmm. uh, who does introspective hypnosis where they take this broad, this whole, whole broad understanding you know of everything they include everything in it regardless of your belief system Mm -hmm. if you don't it includes past lives it includes entity attachments it includes uh, role change it includes you know talking to your deceased if it comes up this is all up to you how it's gonna go so if a person comes to you who doesn't believe in past lives we're not going to facilitate the session and tell them you're gonna go to the past life because they are in control of the session We don't tell them where to go, what to do. They go there themselves. And um, that chat was super powerful. And afterwards, straight away, I booked a a course with Antonio Sanjo. And Leo looked that course up for me when we were chatting. He was like, I'm not sure. He does it, I think, once or twice a year. So I don't know when the next course will come up. And he said, that course is literally in a month time and it's not only Antonio, it's Alba Wayman as well. And there is two of them together. And I was like, this is meant to be, you know? So, <laughs> so I went through that course and I started uh, practicing introspective hypnosis. That's why I'm out of, um, I'm a bit out, out of time right now because when I focus on something, I got to focus on it completely, you know, expand my knowledge and practice as much as I can until I put it out there for people. Cause there is people who are like, Hey, listen, I want a session, but I am not out there. I'm kind of mm-hmm. doing it for everyone who I feel like they're suitable for the session because you gotta be very open for the session. You have to be ready to heal and mm-hmm. face your traumas basically, right? For, for those sessions that are super healing. And if you, if you don't want to open up, I'm not going to force you to open up and we're just not going to have a session. So you have to be full, you know, all cards on the table. That's what I have. That's what I want to look at. Let's see what happens. So, It'd be interesting um, when you do it on me because you know how vulnerable, like I'm full on open. <laughs> yeah, and we do have a session booked with Joey on the 7th of May. So stuff will go down. I know. And, you know, it's... It's like, it's very different for everyone, I think. Some people, when they come back, you know, from hypnosis, they start very clear headed. It's very clear vision. For some people, um, it takes time to come back to life. And it's very personal and intimate for everyone. So there are no rules to it. But I like to say after the session, keep processing everything because dots 
a lot of dots you will join together and it's going to make sense and I did a session on my mom today just uh, afternoon really I didn't tell you that I didn't tell you that you know it's she you know I love I, how your mom is just so open to do whatever she's just like yeah let's do it <laughs> yeah but she has a lot of fear like I told her throughout this whole course I was basically telling her everything how it is because there's a lot of myths about hypnosis the same way like there's a lot of myths about spiritual people right like oh mm -hmm. so I had to break it down to her what it really is and what it can do and but my mom has a lot of fears and fears of unknown. And that's one of her symptoms, one of the triggers. Um, and when she opened the door, I came in with a bouquet of flowers, you know, because I was like, oh, I want to buy some flowers for me. I bought it for mom. And, you know, she was like, oh, that's great. So it kind of eased her down a little bit. The moment she we started doing an interview and uh, the moment she laid down, she's like, oh, my God, my heart's beating so fast. Like. And that was already the first symptom. You know, we got to look at this. Where's that anxiety? Where's that fear coming from? Um, so she went to a memory where she had a fear of an unknown and the fear of as if something, she said in the interview, as if I'm going to lose something or something terrible is going to happen. And it came through in the session. The first memory she went to straight away, even earlier than I asked her to, um, she went to this memory of me and her at the beach, which was supposed to be her happy place. I wasn't bringing her to difficult memories just yet, you know? Mm -hmm. And she, and I said, how, what is happening there? And she's like, straight away, all this, all, everything came up. Cause during the hypnosis, you are very sensitive to emotions and you sensitive to your body symptoms. So you can feel it a bit more, a bit like in mediumship, but a bit stronger, you know? Mm -hmm. So whoever does meeting should they know. And, uh, and she said, I'm looking at you. And she started crying during the session. And I said, okay, let's release that. You know, and I started following that symptom. And we, she took herself from that beach scenery where we were on holiday together, where she feels so sorry for me, to her own memory, how difficult it was for her when I was very sick, nearly dead in the hospital and where she had to go through that whole trauma you know and she said i said where is where is the um, how is your throat feeling because the moment when she laid down she started going like <clears throat> that was Brigitte, uh, i was sorry before you spoke you like no but like when you started chatting people go back like 20 seconds back or more maybe i started itching my neck but it was like I had this thing. I was going to wait to see if you were going to mention it, yeah, but I felt know. this thing. So I, anyway, keep going. Cause I was going to say something I was, you'll see if anyone watches this back, I was like doing this because yeah. I felt this thing, but anyway, keep going. Yeah. And it was partly that that was another symptom that we have discovered, you know? And I said, why are you at in that hospital? She's like, you're laying on the bed and I'm, I'm alone. I'm not getting enough help. You know, it's just a lot to handle. And I said, why are you doing that? And I remember she's like, I'm standing in the hospital by the window and I'm, I'm crying, unstoppably crying and looking at the sky. And I said, how does your throat, throat feel like? She's like, it's like I have a lump. And she came with that symptom of a lump already during the interview. And, um, uh, so that, that's basically where she took herself, you know, towards that time. And I said, why, what are you afraid of there? And she goes, that I'm going to lose you. And I said, how is your heart feeling? My heart's feeling anxiety. So all of these symptoms were coming up for her from the That's memory. Pure trauma, holy shit. Yeah, it's pure, yeah. And it's, a, it's very, it's, it's amazing, you know, places that people go, it can be this life, it can be past, depends, you know, who wants to go where. And it's not about who wants to go where, it's about where your soul needs to take you first you might think that you'll come to me joey with certain symptom of let's say i don't know you depress right now right or whatever mm -hmm. the case you have anxiety once we go into the, your subconscious and explore um, your subconscious your soul knows exactly what's the priority for you right now and it's going to take you there mm -hmm. but most of the time we work out everything uh throughout the session that you came with that you want to work on Mm -hmm. but yeah it's just it's just very mind blown so i can't wait for joseph uh joseph's session um 
I'm you know ask you to if you will want to share parts because it's very personal we'll see because you know me and visualizations and stuff yeah. so we'll see how personal it gets because mm -hmm. like we were just talking offline because i felt like i just wanted to share it with <laughs> brigitte because i can't i realized that i have to tell people some i can't keep secrets at all anymore like like I have to tell at least to someone and I always end up telling it to you because you get it. Um, but you know me from before, like, and what my opinion is on past lives and stuff. Like I, I have a very, you know, and we were talking about this off camera. I'm like, you know, is it a past life or is it, we just tapping into the Akashic world or whatever? Like we, we don't really know. We don't really have proof. Um, and I've always been like that. And I'm like, yeah, well, like you can just because I can literally just sit here and go into if I want to go into like Roman times and I'll just be there or whatever. And I'm like, am I just visualizing? That? We don't really know, but it's not it doesn't really matter because imagination is what we do as children. And that's how children like are so pure is because they just live through that. But this experience that I had recently was so intense. It was very like visually like freaky for me because um, I told Brigitte I had this dream of Los Angeles before I even knew what Los Angeles was when I was a child. And that came through in this past life that came up and I was like, that's why I've always felt like I lived in Los Angeles. And everything was just very, very like intense and I was doing something and I had literal like dates and stuff of my own birth chart and stuff. And then this past life, I was looking into that and just weird freaky stuff happened <laughs> where everything was just so like crazy. It was, everything was just adding up and it was just like, what? And I was like starting to think, well, maybe, maybe past lives actually are real. <laughs> Because I do believe, you know, that we do have past lives. But again, we're all one with it all. So it's confusing sometimes for me because I'm like. I think in you know my what I mean? opinion, what's important is. This is great. I know what you're going to say, but keep yeah, going. It's what, what can you get from that past life? What is the reasoning behind? Because a lot of times when people channel or when people go places, um, they can't focus on the fact that that's who they were, but the why your subconscious is taking you to that exact moment or that person or you know this scenario is to kind of tie tie that in with your life and see what you can learn from it, regardless mm -hmm. of who this is, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this person you'll never be able to prove that, right? But exactly, what are you gonna take from that experience? That's what's important. Yeah, because the, the thing that freaked me out about the whole thing is this person was very famous. And it freaked me out because I was literally like Googling then. I was like, to see if anyone had said there that they had a past life as this person. I was like, because I was trying to just, I think I did find someone who was like, oh, I had a past life as this person. I was like, okay. And then I left it as well. But then I couldn't, I couldn't get away the fact that you know, the information that I showed you on the thing. And that was the part that was freaking me out the most. And kind of talking to Brigitte, because I was holding everything in. Because I was like, this is too, this is insane. This is crazy. So I was holding it all in and I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't know who to tell. Um, and I was telling you and I just started crying and it was coming out of me like crazy. And... But after you, your subconscious showed you something which yeah. led to another things that you can start healing parts of you that relate yeah and then you started kind of talking about what we're kind of talking about now and then i was going through it and all but the craziest thing you talked about sexual stuff and sexual trauma for and well i, I kind of led it into that conversation and now even thinking on it now a wee bit forward I'm like, it, it healed something, Brigitte, definitely. Because I'm like thinking, and now I'm looking at what happened to that person mm -hmm. sexually. And I'm like, and how this person felt like such a piece of shit. And I realized that 
that was me as well. And I'm like, holy shit. And I never really enjoyed like, I don't know. I just had this feeling with sex. I was just like, Ugh. it was kind of like, Ugh. and now I'm looking at it and I'm like, this healed it. I'm like, there's nothing dirty about sex or whatever. Um, because I never thought that I, I didn't actually think that I was being like that at all. Mm-hmm. And now you had that whole thing happen. And I'm like, wait a second. I was thinking that it was like I was dirty or something or like if what I was thoughts that I was having was not normal. And I don't know. And, I, and mm-hmm. now I'm just like, holy shit. <sighs> Sorry, I'm sometimes so <laughs> I'm sometimes so like open on here. But um, I mean, I think that's why people like you, because, you know, it's interesting what you what you just reminded me of. I talked to someone. And it's about being open, right? And I was like, I was telling this person, you know what? I think I'm going to share parts of my personal hypnosis session with my people, you know? Mm -hmm. And for me, I think it's a bit different because I already have a platform and and my people have seen me, you know, in different moods, different looks and like me, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, but then when when this person said that, oh, I, I want to, you know, I want to be like this, I want to be professional, that's that's true, yes, because that's her new, it's a new platform. Mm-hmm. But for me, it, it's that kind of communication made me think about, even if I didn't want, even if I didn't have a platform of people that follow me just yet, what kind of person would I like to follow? Mm-hmm. And then I said to myself, I want to follow someone who is a human, who is also, because there is a reason we incarnated. We got our karmic shit to work from, right? And work mm-hmm. with. I don't want to take away the fact that I'm healing at the same time when I'm healing people. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm going to have my tutor on this channel sometime in the next coming weeks. And we're going to be talking a bit more about introspective hypnosis and his journey and all of that stuff. But um, I said to him, you know, because he asked me, do you want to share the session? And I was like, at first I was like, I need to process everything, what has happened. Um, and then I said, yeah, you can you can use it on, on all of your, you know, platforms. Like, I'm good with this. Because mm-hmm. I was like, this, I think this age right now is age of open, openness, authenticity, and being who you are and not putting people on pedestal because a lot of people are being brought down if you noticed you know those mm-hmm. who are high up they bring and it's part of the cancel culture culture which i don't really um, approve of in some cases you notice as well though part of that being authentic is also on the other side of it is causing people to have quick karma like things just everything seems a lot quicker like we're healing things a lot quicker yeah yeah as, the time is moving really it's really mm, fast right now mm. yeah and i don't know i just want to be very open with what i'm you know what i have to sort out and uh, how this can help some people because partly of i think sharing sessions like that it can show someone else that damn you know I might have that or maybe I need to look at this or maybe Mm. this is part of my story too and we might heal for other people's stories as well Mm. which is quite awesome something that I like that you were talking about there that I think is really important as well for people at the minute because we kind of spoke about how we're getting emails from people and like everyone wants help Mm -hmm. because we're all like yeah everything's very intense at the minute and we're just ordinary people but you know we offer up services but we also like we have a schedule and we have our own personal lives and stuff like this but at the minute everyone seems to like because we're all at home and well we're kind of easing up with things now but everyone's online and they're looking for tutors and stuff like this and me and you for such a long time we were always like I don't need you know what I mean we were always like everyone's wanting like a coach and things like this but this is what you're doing was different you were in a course that was very much like, no, you have to create it yourself. It was very, like, I liked how you explained how um, your tutor did things and the dynamics of the two of them, which sounds very, very interesting. It would probably be too intense for me, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? That's the proper way that we should be looking for a tutor or a mentor, because at the end of the day, this is 
the only mentors that I've really had in my life, they didn't even know they were my mentors. And some of them were even the great mentors, right? Those people. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that are like on social media and they're just being themselves and they're doing their whatever they want to do. And I'm just following. I'm just kind of following kind of stuff that they do, like trying to like there's a guy. His name is Coach JV. He's on YouTube and he's the crypto guy. And I like follow him for advice. But then I started to realize that there's certain things that I don't really resonate with what he believes Mm -hmm. um and i'm like oh cool and i've moved on and i'm like okay and there's another so i have two people that i follow for crypto but i don't go beyond that like i don't get all the all the people Mm -hmm. you kind of need to find someone that you resonate with and stick with them but you have to realize that there's going to come a time and this is the goal i think there's going to come a time where you don't resonate with them anymore and then you have to move on and that goes the same for anyone that follows me Mm-hmm. if you start to realize that you don't resonate with me it's not my fault you just have to learn to be able to move on and like not really you know because that means you've you've evolved past where I'm kind of at where I'm helping people and it's the same with you like we don't have to stay with people we don't need that mentor to be there all the time because mm-hmm. the best mentors are the ones that don't know they're your mentor mm-hmm. I think and some of them for me are not even human <laughs> they're like Here we go. Not re- like trees and stuff and talking to, to the go. trees and things like that like it's Ancient wisdom yeah it's things like that um i just find it i find it at the minute people want you know they think that someone who has all the knowledge is the one because but what a lot of the knowledge nowadays is it's hard to find the exact, you know, right thing. There's a lot of information. And I think that's why people are confused because they were used to someone giving something to them and that's that's it. But now there's mm-hmm. a lot. And now it's your responsibility to filter out what is true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why maybe a lot of people find themselves in a place where they're like, I don't know, I need you to tell me this. No, like you got to tell that to yourself and find it to your in your own way you know it's so weird though to see this happening because I was always the person at school that never like I was like I don't want to believe in that like what I never liked spoon feeding I I hated it I actually when I was a child like if my mother tried to feed me I'd be like no I was very much like I want to do what I want to do and that might seem for such a long time like little brat but it's not it's because we're programmed to think that we have to do it this way and we have to behave that way and we have to believe this and do what you're told and blah, 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 walk in line, bless yourself, all this shit. And we're like, we would let me do what I want to do. And I was just always that little troubled child who just did what I wanted to do. And now people are having to learn how to do this. And it's like, they feel like they're doing something wrong when it's actually being selfish is a thing that they don't want you to do but being selfish is what people kind of need to start doing to find out what is wrong with the things that they've been holding in and everything Mm -hmm. um and i think this year is going to be kind of tough on a lot of people who haven't really done the work but a lot of those people are not going to be watching videos like this because i think and I, i think you agreed with me i think for those people, it's going to, something big's going to come and it's just going to be like a big breakthrough for them. And they're going to be uh, not on the other side, like they're still going to have to go through stuff. But I don't think people have to follow spiritual stuff to heal. Do Would you agree? Yeah. And we, I think we talked about this kind of indirectly for a while mm. where. We don't want to be in this like a hundred percent because we got to live that as people like to say 3d life and do all all of those things and mm-hmm. i don't know if you noticed but a lot of people who do find their way back to themselves or back to spirituality and you know do something that is um you know helpful for other people they gotta there is a phase in their life for a certain amount of years where, forget it, where they forget about this or, you know, abilities that they have or they refuse it. And you got to go and experience relationships and, you know, 
go through breakups and you know take jobs that they don't like because this is part of a, of a learning for them until they come back on track and they have all of this experience ready to go and they can help other people who might be going through that time you know mm -hmm. currently so but again this is not a race exactly it's not a race and a lot of people i think they are comparing themselves to someone else you know, mm -hmm. oh, um, I don't know, I'm 38, I'm still single, I have no kids. You know, I'm a problem. Are you? Mm -hmm. are you why are you a problem? You know, mm -hmm. what's, what's wrong? Do you know as well, like, like, this is something that I realized. So for such a long time, I've always, like, believed that I'm going to stay young for a very long time. Like, all my life from a very young age I was just like I'm just gonna stay young forever I still look very young yeah you do I'm nearly 30 and I feel like I still look like a 16 year old sometimes <laughs> but um <laughs> I didn't realize until now that like the whole aging thing is a fear thing mm -hmm. the the whole disease we're not meant to get diseases and we're moving forward into the future and technology is going to change and help people and we're going to live lots lots longer back thousands and thousands of years ago people were living way into their hundreds and they're like you can do your own research with that but like it's been written that that was the way it was that people were living a lot longer and i truly think and believe in my life that that's where I'm going. Like I'm going to live for a, quite a while and I'm quite happy with that because um, I just seen it for, for so long, all my life. I was like, I don't know why, but I just feel like I'm going to live really long and I'm going to look quite young for a while. And I didn't understand what it was. So thinking that, you know, you have to get married at this certain age and, you know, we have to have kids before this and blah, blah, blah. That's all the programming that, that we have to yeah. accept that this has to go now because there's no rules. We're so we've been put under all these rules from literally since school. Mm -hmm. Like I remember being told to like I said we've already stand in line. And now it's the exact it, we're back now, except you know, remember the six feet apart thing. What is this bullshit? Like what the f ah. I go to the grocery store and I'm in the fucking military. Like, what the fuck yeah. is this? And I mean, all of these restrictions and it still keeps going, right? Yeah. And, but it, this is the up. thing I'm walking through and I'm like, this is all for the people. This is for the people. Yeah. So I'm okay I mean, with it. I think, I don't know. Like a lot of people have finally opened their eyes. What matters the most throughout this time, you know, Oh, I can go and touch a tree or I can spend more time with my family. Or maybe I don't like this relationship anymore. Now I see it. I had no time. Mm -hmm. so, and I look at the whole everything because uh, I went through a rage period <laughs> and I fucking vented to you. It's like people are crazy, and now I look around and I I'm like, when it started, <laughs> oh, it was like Brigitte, what is going on? I was like trying, it was like walking up to zombies and like wake up, <laughs> but that like that fizzled off because I look around now and I'm like everything is so divine. You don't realize that your life changed for the better. You don't realize that your life changed. Like everything that's happening outside, it still seems like just nothing makes sense because it's not meant, it's not meant to make sense. God planned it to be like this because this is what it's all about. And I'm I'm just excited though, because I feel like things again, like I said, I think things are moving fast, but um, you know. If everyone starts to awaken all like at one time, then there's going to be a big collective kind of fear at that time. But we're going to understand it. A lot of us who are very tapped in. But we ha I think we have to mentally prepare ourselves for like this kind of chaos that people are just going to like, because at the minute it feels like, you know, it's the starting period where groups of people are getting together and, you know, they're protesting and it's like, there's a there's a nice vibration. I think we're actually going to move into that. But there's also going to be a lot of chaos with people who don't want to wake up. They want to stay stagnant because that's just the dynamics of things. Yeah, it's balance. Yeah. yeah. But it's like getting to that point where it's like, ee, and then bang. And we're like, fuck. Because <laughs> there's people panicking and, oh, uh, I don't know. Um, like, oh, I wanted. 
I'm kind of backtracking here. What you were saying about, I think you were touching on the people nowadays and, you know, and I don't know if you mentioned generations, but you were kind of talking about how it's going to be like in the future. And I had a conversation with my brother a week ago and he goes, you know what, he got a, a new job and he's like, honestly, like I'm looking at this, you know, generation now who come in for interviews and he's like, I have no idea how to keep them because they are new. They are not, they don't want this old type of, you know, workspace. They come to the interview being like with an attitude where like, I'm going to work here maybe today, maybe tomorrow I'm going to be gone. So who knows? You know, he's like, and I see people like that all the time who come in where it used to be like if someone comes in for the interview, they like, if, if your, you know, future to be boss, right, asks you, how was your day? You know, um, you'd say, oh, that it's, it's really good. How are you? And now people come in saying like, oh, it was quite a tiring day and they very honest. And that's what we go into. Like there is no BS, there is no, you know, like, oh, everything is butterflies and rainbows, you know, it's about being super honest and creating spaces for people where they actually want to work because people will not be working for people who don't give a fuck about them and also in spaces and places that are not suitable for them because they're going to be like, I'm going to go tomorrow, you know, if you're going to do mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. I don't care, I'm going to buy a cabin in the woods and I live there. I can live off crypto. You know what I mean? So that's what yeah. we're going to. That's so true. And and like, we're moving into a more, we want to do things. We This is what life is all about. We want to create. We want to make things. We want to do what we came here to do and things that we're interested in. And the reason that the, you know, the millennials are so like, ugh, didn't care about work. I was that same person. I was like, I never mm -hmm. saw them that way. It's a new generation. They gotta it's, make the rules. Yeah. And, and it's freedom. <laughs> and where yeah, and where we're moving, we can't lie. We're so honest. We're so it might come across as like, whoa, what the hell? But the older generation isn't used to it. Mm -hmm. They're triggered by it because they held everything and because they were told to be quiet, don't say your problems, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Whereas the younger generation or the our generation kind of <laughs> um, yeah um i'm gonna get some water just from the corner i keep going i can hear you i ran out of water i'm so annoyed um I can give you some. but Please. part of like part of that program and that this generation came in with was like you know it just just didn't resonate to work nine to five and this is the thing that people don't see they were trying to you know convince us that robots and technology taking over our jobs is a bad thing yeah i remember this started like some time ago oh robots gonna take over our jobs like and like really um you know we went into this whole thing and technology is kind of sorting things out you know technology is mm -hmm. looking after things and we don't need where people are starting to realize oh wait we actually don't need to work because technology can do it for us and we can go live our life and, you know, chill in the sun and be yeah. crypto abundance. Again, money, what I say to people is money at the minute, it's it's confusing. But once we go three, if four... We're in that transition, right? Yeah, so it's, the, yeah, the crypto thing's very confusing for people because they still have to go through the blockages with it that me and you definitely London tested us we went through it like we had to like we were like pennies at one point and now we're we've we've really like transmuted that and we are just like happy with things we're like money just comes to us because we understand it's as energy and yeah and it's also because you know once you're on the right track in life once you decide to say hey I don't think I'm in the right place or in the right job or that's what I want to do. Even if you broke and you decide to take that chance like a full card mm -hmm. and you take that step towards what you love, you're always going to get a really good feedback as long as you follow your heart. And that's what happened with us, right? We're like, oh, okay, go and don't know, like no cash in my pocket. I came back like minus 3,500 in my, in my um, credit card, right? And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I, I trust myself. And I think that trust 
in that belief and that, you know, intuition, every time you listen to it, it's just, um, there's miracles for you. And how did we, how did we heal those abundance blockages? We followed our passion. Mm -hmm. So this is why they want you in a nine to five job that you do not care about because you will stay stuck in that cycle well, for some people nine to five they actually enjoy it yeah that's yeah. the thing though yeah yeah so like waitresses that actually love their job do you know what i mean you can tell you, yes you, yes yeah. like these are the people where i look at them and i'm like yes you know i i remember before this lockdown um i went to the very old it's not a restaurant it's a place where people used to come and eat you know it's like a a place uh, you'd go to your grandma's and eat. It's very kind of traditional food and nothing fancy at all, but mm -hmm. it's very it's very nice. And I walked in there, and those people, those ladies, they were in their sixties and they've been working there from the beginning of the opening of that place. Mm -hmm. And they love that job. They greet mm -hmm. everyone, and I'm like, I love seeing things like that. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know. The thing about that is those people that love their job and they're really good at it and they go to the table and they're very good hostess and all of that, but get treated like shit, get shit wages yeah. and just keep putting up. That is what's changing because in the future where we're going, it's going to be community based where you're going to have people who are like, Hey guys, come over here to um, this little area where we're all going to just like meditate and have food and I'm going to bring you the food. You know what I mean? That's where those people are going to be. Mm -hmm. And it's not, they're not going to be worried about money or anything like that's kind of how I see people who like that kind of work. You know what I mean? And like even hairdressers, they mm -hmm. don't get paid enough for how much healing they do for people. Like they chat away to people. and Yes, these psychologists. And I think yeah. to sum it up, where we're going towards to is compassion and authenticity. Like yeah. I had a bit of a test today. That's what you reminded me of. I was coming out of a shop and next to the shop, there was this old elderly lady selling flowers. <laughs> Literally here. <laughs> oh. Selling flowers. And... Um, I was like, I'm going to go and get some flowers, you know, because when someone sells something themselves, I'm like, oh, I want to help you. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a couple of bouquets and then I said, you know, how much? She said six euros. And I I gave her 10 and then she gave me four back. And I said, two is for you, you know, two euros for you. And for like, it's, it's normal, right, to leave money sometimes for people, especially the elderly. And you should have seen her reaction. She, her body language was like, she leaned back and she's like, no, 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 I can't take this. Two euro, Joey. I know. I can't take this. I'm like, no, but that like, it's for you. Like, I'm, it's fine. And it took her a minute to process what happened. Two euros. Mm -hmm. So, and I think our, you know, and all the generations afterwards are the ones who can change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And by being compassionate and understanding and free in a way. And isn't it funny, like, the work that we do when you hear stuff like that you're like whoa whoa the the trauma that this person yeah. has probably went through because of two euro yeah. they felt like they didn't deserve to that's bad like and she's that is bad. in a really shit weather it was really cold with a mask on the whole day i kept mm -hmm. seeing her before so i mean yeah, I'm excited for the future, to be honest. Yeah, but and I think that are going to go down. Like, and I think, nice. I think that that's the biggest wake up call for people is the abundance thing, mm -hmm. because we do deserve it. You deserve it. We all deserve to have enough to be happy. It's mm -hmm. not about getting rich quick. It's not about that. But like some, this is kind of how they have to do it. They have to you know, be able, like people are making money off silly cryptos because it's just, it's scattered. What I, what I puck up uh, psychically, I want to kind of connecting in is like people are making money off crazy ways. There's so many different crazy ways to make money because they have to kind of do it like that mm -hmm. to make people wealthy and to make people question like, how, how is that possible? And it triggers these people who would never have believed that you could make money off something like overnight but this is the this is the they're trying to program us now to get back to realizing that because 
the negative side of things are gone and there's good guys kind of working with us you to know, help it us. To be true so people like sugar they like this is bs yeah and there's people's i've heard of one person in ireland well i don't know them personally but people's like credit cards cleared mortgages and stuff cleared and people are like How, what and they have no explanation for it because it has a lot to do with the money system but this is the things we have to get used to is a lot of the debt that we have is not it's not fair it's a it's 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 putting a limitation on our soul which is not what this planet was about this planet was about here to come and enjoy the duality and experience the love in a harmonious way because there's a negative 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 side that we just got a bit distorted and it got really like fucked up kind of negative whereas i feel like earth was meant to be like this polarization that was very harmonious you know what i mean not just completely everything controlled do you get what i mean yeah yeah yeah, it took, I think um, over time it kept repressing, 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 and now it's time to, for it to stop. And it's going to yeah. be a big, a big change that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, we spoke for 45 minutes. Should we? Right. We said we're going to stop it at 45, and I think we haven't even touched on <laughs> something. So, well, so we're going to leave it at that. Maybe you're going to catch up the next time. Um, well, we'll yeah. be talking. We might record after my session or we'll see. We'll see how you feel like after the session. If you want to go sleep, go sleep. If you feel like you're clear headed. I will probably get the munchies because anytime I, <laughs> anytime I do spiritual like work, I get, I feel like I've taken drugs. I get, get serious munchies. <laughs> um, can I ask one last question? Sure. Have you touched on in your course, like, um, implants like et stuff um hmm. it's very personal to people's belief system it's not for us to kind of you know judge i get what you I, okay you keep you can tell that you learned a lot because you you're, you're very like it's like you're very strict with it like you under not strict with it in a bad way but you really follow a really balanced belief yeah. with it and that's what i want to do with it you know like yeah. some people would go like it's all cool it's all good you know if you studied let's say introspective hypnosis you can say hey you know what um i'm interested in that you know i want to kind of give a bit more focus on on that on robots mm -hmm. on aliens and all of that stuff and if this is your path you're going to get people who come to you with those problems sometimes we get people who say hey that's what I want to focus on mostly, only this life. I just want to focus on this life. What happened with Antonio, he, my tutor, he started um, learning QHHT and, uh, and the, basically I think, oh yeah, so they were, were not dealing with entities. And the first session that he has with a person, there's an attachment. What does he do then? Because they're not dealing with that. Yes. And he said, I kept getting attachments. It was, uh, something was showing me the way. You got to look at this. And that's over time, over these years, he, uh, he uh, kind of implemented a lot of things that it was brought to him to have like a well-rounded session, you know? So for me, if someone comes, you know, and then tells me throughout, you know, trans and, you know, that's something that I feel like it reminds me of this and reminds me of that, I'm like, cool. Like whatever, whatever, your subconscious brings out and whatever you is happening for me the main thing in, in hypnosis is to eliminate the symptom you mm. can imagine it as a flower as a robot as an alien i don't care this is not my place to judge it's a dildo a dildo <laughs> <laughs> you know it's not my place to judge i'm just there to facilitate the session and get to the bottom of the origins and symptoms and you know to let yeah. you go clear headed and, and release all of that stuff. I'm looking really, I'm really looking forward to it. And I will, I'll treat it like, uh, I wish I could have a bath before, but ugh, live at home with my parents. Yeah, like before the session, uh, if you, if you can, you know, um, don't drink a lot of coffee, no alcohol, they, even though we don't drink much day before the session. Um, if you want, some people can take a walk, you know, they, they're very ungrounded. Just, you know, I think I will, there. I think I will walk on the beach just cause water 
can be helping me kind of connect into and some memories might already come up before this session knowing um, me <laughs> so don't cling on them just know acknowledge them that they're there because some things might come up yeah we'll I'm, I'm very like that anyway i'm like oh, okay like yeah. when i told you about the dragon coming through i was like oh let's just see where this goes i don't i don't like things because so much things in my past used to come to me and they were very negative and like twisted and trying to mm -hmm. manipulate me and now i'm just like oh let's see what happens so i'm excited but um yeah let's let's end it there because i think it's nearly an hour now <laughs> yeah okay thank you for listening um, stuck around guys for our, thank you. our chat bye bye